Have you ever questioned the way we design with CAD? This video is to make you think about it. This video is to compare the choice of CAD functions using the traditional way to the new futuristic way. Before moving on, let's define some technical terms. The technical function is the role of the part. It's why the part is designed and created. It can be guiding, centering, or holding an object. The design feature is the how the part accomplishes its role. It's the geometry that ensures the technical function, like holes, bosses, fillets, and gussets. The cut function is a code stored inside the software to generate the 3D geometry. We can call this code using this icon. For example, the path function is to generate the geometry along the direction. When we give this cut function specific inputs and assign specific values to its variables, we get the cut feature. The cut feature is what we see in 3D and in the specification tree. Here it's important to notice or to mention that if we give if, if the input of the cut function changes, the output changes too. So, if we give the cut function a new input, we will get a new output, we will get a new cut feature. But with the same properties. We will get a new geometry, but with the same name, the same color, and the same location in the tree. Now, the terms on the left are, belong to the physical world. The terms on the right belong to the virtual world. The terms on the top are abstract. The terms on the bottom are concrete, visible. Now, what's the traditional way to design a part? It begins with a technical function. So why? Then most of designers need to search for solutions. By imagination, by brainstorming, by exploring other designs, or consulting the catalogs. And after choosing one solution, they move to the virtual world. And to be able to represent the design that we have in mind, to represent it in 3D, we need to use the cut functions. By giving specific input, we will get a geometry, we will get the cut feature as expected, as imagined. But this way, is a drawing. Here the computer aids us to draw, right? Imagine that you have a machine that can see through your mind and can project your ideas in 3D. This high-tech machine still help you by drawing, not designing. What about the new way to design a part? In the same manner, we start by the technical function. But then instead of searching for solutions, we move directly to the virtual world. We try to figure out a cat function that represents the technical function. Right? I ask myself, what is the best cat function that describes my technical function? Here I'm not thinking about a geometric representation. My objective is a behavior uh, representation. Then it's fun time. I each time change the input and explore possibilities. I will get undefined number of possibilities, right? Many of them are functional solutions, right? I can choose as many as I can for review, and if I want, I keep one for further development. And this is a computer-aided design. I go to the virtual world without solutions, and I come back with a solution by the help of uh, the software. Let's take an example and see and compare it with the traditional way and the new one. Let's imagine that I want to design a guide uh, for rotation. I can imagine some possible ideas, all right? I can guide rotation with two bearings, with a bashing, or 
just with the hole that guides the axle. Let's imagine that I keep the hole or the hub that guides the axle, and now, with the traditional way, I move to the software, to the CAD tool, with the intention to represent this solution in 3D. How can I represent this hub? So here there is many possibilities to generate or to create a cylinder uh, in the CAD tool. Generally, designers choose the easiest one. The hole here is the easiest function. It requires the least inputs. And by giving specific output or specific input, I will get the cylinder that I expected from the beginning. What about the new way? I have I want to design uh, a solution to guide the rotation. Here I ask myself, what is the best cut function that describes, uh, that describes technical function guiding rotation? Here, the rotation has an axisymmetric, uh, is an axisymmetric movement, right? So, I will look for a CAD function that generates or has the characteristics of axisymmetry. Here, the answer to this is the groove, right? So, let's represent this in CAT here. So, to, to, to create a uh, with, uh, with the old uh, way, just I can create a hole to draw the solution, right? But in the new way, I don't have yet, I didn't decide by, uh, with the solution yet, but I'm trying to represent the technical function. So as I said, we use the group to represent uh, the uh, guide uh, rotation, right? The, gu uh, the guide um, to rotate uh, the other object. Okay, so here I need to give, I need to create a sketch. So now let's put it here. I would draw anything here. I'm not concentrating or I'm not concerned with a specific solution right now. Okay. Just I want to draw uh, or I want to call the function, right? Okay. Okay. So here I have, I created a cat function that describes uh, well the technical function. Now we move, as I said, to the fun time. It's, fine. it's the time for experimenting this test function and see and explore and discover the possibility, right? So let's go to change the inputs to get new output or new cat features. Okay, so here, uh, if I make an inclined line, I will get I will get a cone. The cone ensures the uh, rotation or guides the rotation. Uh, okay, instead of using one line, what about using two lines? I will get, I will get two cones, and they two ensure the rotation. What if I use, right, in order to represent the guide for the busing, Okay, that's possible. If they want to adopt the solution for two bearings, it's also by adding the same thing to the other side. Okay, as you can see here, with the same function, I already, I can already represent the three proposed solution with bearings, with busing, or just a hub, right? So, what about using circles or arcs? Um, for example, I'm going to put a circle here with a line like that. 
I'm just exploring you, sir. Okay, and even this geometry ensures the rotation. And I keep exploring with, with other inputs, right? So what if I choose spline, spline, right? It also can guide the rotation. And I keep exploring, right? It's like brainstorming uh, in 3D, right? Um, I may ask myself what if um, to change the parameter, what if, for example, I use I use here yeah, a portion of the uh, of the rotation, ten millimeter. Okay, so this cannot guide the rotation. What if I choose I, I use or I combine the groove with another axisymmetric function, the circular repetition. Okay. And this two cannot guide the rotation. So with what can I do if, for example, add another group to the center to remove material center? Here I lost the first group. If I want to represent it, I can add, for example, thickness. And here, as you can see, I get somehow unexpected solution. Even this guide can ensure, uh, or even uh, this feature can ensure, ensure uh, guiding uh, the rotation. Right. Um, if, for example, I can reverse. I'm just trying to play with with the inputs. Right. I will have the axle. And imagine that you can do all of these uh, just with uh, with one function, right? Um, okay, do you see that? So this is why I'm called the fun time because I'm, I'm seeing some pictures with uh, some geometries that are not easy to imagine at the beginning. Okay, good. So after choosing the right that function, I keep exploring the possibilities, right? And finally, I can keep the most promising uh, ideas or the most promising designs for review with my team or with my, my clients. And as you can see here, the uh, great advantage is here that I can um, switch between solutions very quickly. Now, you have seen how much solutions I can generate for one technical function. Now, let's imagine I have a part with three technical functions and each one of them, I generate three possibilities or three functional solutions um, for each uh, technical function. Now, let's imagine how much possibilities, how much combination I can uh, create using this approach, this functional approach, right? I can find 27 combinations, all right? I can provide 27 designs to this part. And I can switch quickly between those 27 possibilities. Right. So if we zoom out, the traditional way to design a product starts with a client specification. Then we think about solutions. We keep one, and then we create a 3D model of the chosen solution. The new approach is by, again, starting by the client specification, but instead of thinking about solutions, I delay the search, uh, the searching for solutions, and I start create a 3D functional model. And this 
3D functional model will be like a design framework, a framework containing my or understands my need, understands the technical functions that I uh, want to um, to design. This framework helps me to generate, to test, to review, and to solve What are the advantages of this approach? They are many, but mainly this approach help me to discover unexpected creative designs. As you saw in the example, this approach helped me to design outside the box. But strangely, I see myself designing inside another box. But this new box, which I created deliberately, helped me to converge faster to the optimal solution. Okay? But, I admit, the creation of this 3D functional model takes time. But, the generation of solutions saves time. So, there is compromise here. You may ask yourself, should I always use this approach in design? The technical function is not the only criterion to choose or construct this adequate CAD function. Then, what are the other criteria? Sometimes we need to combine multiple CAD functions to well represent one technical function. Can I do the opposite? In some cases, it's not evident to find and construct the adequate CAD function. Then what should I do? All these functions will be discussed and presented in details in the section choice of CAD functions in the chapter Design for Functionality. This chapter will represent more than the choice of cut functions. We will speak also about the choice of references, how to apply constraints, how to organize your data, and how to create and relate this data with each other. Right. So, if you are more curious, if you are curious about this approach and you want to know more, you can watch me on LinkedIn. And if you see this training, it's beneficial for your job and your career, then I invite you to join me uh, in this training. This training is really a good investment for all uh, mechanical designers. Thank you.